Hi, my name is Heidi. Welcome to Bulldog Bound 3E, elementary exploration event. Today we're going to participate in a workshop that highlights one of the programs you can study when you are a student at Allen Hancock College. We are going to spend 20 minutes learning from one of our professors about the tech and doing some cool activities. Remember that Bulldog Bound is part of the Hancock Promise program. If you graduate from one of the high schools within the Allen Hancock Joint Community College District, you will be eligible for the first year at Allen Hancock College. For the first year free at Allen Hancock College, say it with me, first year free at AHC. All right, let's head off to our workshop. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so today we'll be doing a paper architecture workshop and we're going to build paper structures with you in the class today and it, I think it's going to engage you and inspire you and if you really like doing this, if you sort of love this to do this and you can't get enough of it, uh, it may be a sign that you have a vocation in environmental design which includes architecture, city and regional planning, construction management, interior design, landscape architecture, and also structural engineering. And um, my name is, is Jonas Sturrus, and I'm doing this for uh, Bulldog Builders, which is part of Allen Hancock College in Santa Maria and I'm an instructor in architecture in the industrial technology department and I teach architecture 111 and architecture 112 which are uh, very similar to the classes they teach in a university first year in architecture and they're, they're graphics and design classes and I also teach Architecture 131, which is materials of architecture and materials of construction. So the materials you're going to need for this, um, we're trying to keep it really simple. Uh, if you just have some 8.5 by 11 copy paper around the house, that'll work just fine. Uh, even if it's 11 by 17 or legal size, it'll all work. But I, I put down 11, 8 and a half by 11 because it's the most common size that everyone probably has. And even if it's, if it's been used and it's got newsprint on it, that's okay. Yeah, that'll be even more interesting. And typically in class, we, we spend about 30 to 45 minutes on this. And that's usually enough, but, but for you, you know, you may really get into this and you may want to spend more time if you really get into this problem. Um, and then very often in the class, I'll just walk around. So let's say I have a 45 minute deadline. Once we're down to 10 minutes, I'll tell the class, you know, you got 10 minutes left. And I'll keep watching my clock and I'll say, okay, now you got five minutes left you got a minute left, and that sort of adds to the suspense. And you should also document what you're doing, so even if you don't like it at first, and you know, oh, I'm going to try it again, document it somehow, you know, with a camera, or, you know, maybe your teacher or your parent can help you with that, you know, doing it maybe with a smartphone, because they all have cameras now, and document everything you do. Because in architecture school, they, they want to see the process you went through uh, to get to the final product. It's just as important. And you're, when you're working in the real world, it gives you evidence, you know, that your client, that you actually did a lot of work here. And that's why the bill is so high. <laughs> okay, and then also, when it's all done, you can measure your tower, because usually, you know, we like to build towers and measure them. And whoever has the tallest tower could, like, win a uh, first prize. And then you'd have a second prize and a third prize. And then maybe even uh, honorable mention. So it could be an architectural competition. 
Um, and some of the student learning outcomes, you'll, you'll, you'll start to understand and apply basic structural concepts. You'll develop model making skills. And also, you'll, you'll start visualizing and thinking in three dimensions. So uh, being able to understand things 3D is really important in environmental design classes and in the professions as well. And um, I guess we can just start. So uh, kind of an initial exercise you could do is to see how important shape is. Because you're allowed to take the paper and bend it and fold it. And uh, so, for example, if I'm making a bridge and all I have is this, this sheet of paper, it's about 11 by 17. And let's say I have like a river valley here and I'm going to try to make a bridge just out of this paper. So I just put it down here. And I notice it's already starting to bow just a little. So the paper itself, you could say, is the dead load. The dead load is the, the load of the structure itself. So the, the paper is the dead load here. And it's already starting to deflect a little bit. It's starting to bow, which is not a good thing, because usually you, don't, you want a, a stiff structure. You don't want any deflection. And if I just put like a little bit of weight, like I take a roll of pennies, you know, these are whatever, 50 pennies in here, it's fairly heavy, and I just put it down there, it, it just like fails immediately. So it's, it's really not very stiff, it's not very strong, it, it's, not, it's not helping me. So what can I do to make that bridge stronger? One thing I could do is give it a different shape. So I could take uh, that same piece of paper, I could fold it up every inch, right? I could fold it up every inch and turn it into a, a folded plate structure. And they actually do this. They actually corrugate things, make roofs out of them. Uh, they're made out of plywood or concrete or pre-manufactured wood products. And they actually can make structures this way. And, and span between two bearing walls. A bearing wall is, is a wall that takes the load of that roof and takes it down to the foundation. So like right here, you know, my, th these are sort of like my bearing walls. They, they transfer the load of this roof down to those walls. But actually, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm making it a bridge today, right? So there's my new bridge. And you know, it's not bowing, it's not sagging. It's, it's able to take its own dead load now pretty nicely. Now let's apply a live load. Let's, you know, let's take the, the, this and let's say that's a bus or a car and that's our live load. A live load just comes and goes. You know, it'll, it'll come on the bridge, go to the other side of the bridge, the live load disappears. Uh, snow, uh, rain, they're all, they're all live loads, right? So I'll put one of these on, see what happens. And it's, it's holding pretty well. It's not deforming. I, I, don't, I don't see any bowing yet. So this is a lot stronger. And then I can just keep piling. You know, I can use potatoes. If, if mom's got potatoes around, she's not going to use, I can use potatoes. <laughs> Whatever I have at home, I can use books. I have a lot more pennies. So I'll put on some more pennies. And it's still holding up. It's still holding up. It's still not deforming. Maybe a little bit, but boy, it can take a lot of weight. Now, see now, there it goes. So it finally went, but it, it was able to hold quite a bit of weight. So you can try this at home. It'll give you an idea. If, if you shape things, they become stronger. I could do the same thing with, uh, with columns. I could just take a piece of paper, and uh, this is like eight and a half by something, and I take the eight and a half side, and I just roll it up, curl it up, I let go, it sort of forms a spiral, and I make four of these, and I, I, you know, I could put them like far apart, but I don't think that's going to work as well. I'm going to put them all together, 
bundle them, they're sort of going to work like a team supporting each other. So I put four of these together like that, and then I, I'll, just, I'll just pile on the books and see how many books it can take. So there I put one up there. So far, so good. I put some paper on. Whatever, whatever I have laying around, put on some magazines. So far, so good. And it's, I, I don't see any, any buckling yet. I don't see any buckling yet. And buckling would be if it starts bowing in a vertical direction, that's buckling. But I'm, I'm not seeing that here yet. And I, you know, I could just keep putting these books on until it goes. And it's still, it's still not buckling. And a few more. And a few more. And it's still, it's still holding, yeah. It's holding a lot of books. So, and yeah, it's still, I bet this one's going to kill it. So I'll put this one on first. Sooner or later, it's going to come down, I knew. Let's put the big one on. Well, I don't know. You know, that, that's a lot of books. So you, you could keep piling them up and see how, how many books you could get on this, right? And that would be another. So you're, you're, you're testing the shape and the strength of the material. So anyway, with that in mind, uh, I can come up with all sorts of shapes. So for example, I could you know, play around. I, I could you know, tear things and make angles, almost like a steel angle. And I could put maybe like four of these together, sort of like that. And you know, I'm just playing around. I don't know where it's going to go. I'm just trying ideas. Because if I just sit around and think about it, that's not going to help me. It's better just to try things. And if they fail, that's OK. I can learn from my mistakes. And learning from my mistakes is, is really a good thing. Because then I can make it better. So don't be afraid of failure. Just keep, keep persevere, persevering and trying. So I sort of made it like a box, right, with the, with the cross in the middle, box out on the outside. And then I, I think I'll just put a floor on this, and I'm using another color. And then I can try something else. I can sort of lighten the load maybe, huh? Maybe make it a little bit lighter on the second floor. And I can take like maybe three, three sheets and, and, you know, fold them in half. And I can try to make like a like a triangle out of this somehow. Make a triangle, because I think a triangle may be a strong shape. Yeah, so here we go. So I sort of made a triangle out of it, and then I just put that on top. It's a different color, and it's lighter, but it's still, you know, still holding up pretty well. And then, you know, and then with the floors, what I do, I bend the floors like this, so it doesn't sag as much. And there's my next floor. And then I could take something very light on the top. It could be like a, like a triangle. I fold the paper in the four and just make like a triangle out of that. And that, that's my top. So I have a bottom, a middle, and a top. It's very tripartite. And you know, that's, that's one way I could do it. Uh, another way that I could try to do it is C's. And let me explain to you what that looks like. So a C, I just take the paper and I fold it into uh, in the three, in the three. So that's like a C. So they have like C channels. They make them out of steel. It's a, it's a very common structural shape. And I'll just put maybe, oh, I don't know. I think, I think you know, for me, th about three of those work pretty well. And I turn it into a box. And it's fairly strong. And I, I make that my base. And then I take three more C's. And now I actually had some legal size paper. So I think this is about 15 inches or so. 
which gives me the slender thing. But other than that, it's the same construction. It's just slender and lighter than that big wide base. So I have like a base at the bottom. I have a column at the top. And I'll just get uh, a piece of paper between. So again, I'm folding the paper, you know, putting that like this. Oh, there we go. It's falling. And something like that. So that it becomes sort of like a column. And then I could keep, you know, building on that as, uh, as high as I can get it. You know, maybe I put a, a triangle or something at the very top. And yeah, you can get a lot higher than these. I'm just showing you some basic principles of how you could do it. And um, the other one that we did that actually fell down, he actually did a triangle like this. And I'm just going to move over here to this, to this one. And then I'll move over to this one, and then we're done with this table. But uh, he, he had this as high as that one. But it went down, because again, they're very delicate. And he used, he basically just used triangles all the way through. He used these triangles. And he just kept piling them up. And then out down at the bottom, he had a 11 by 17, same idea. He had like three of these, three of these. And each one is just, you know, this. And he just makes a triangle out of that. You know, there it is. There's this triangle, pretty strong. And then he just piles them up. So he had a very wide base. And then above that, he, he just made them lighter. So that's another way to do it. And then you can take, uh, you know, this stuff, roll it up, and use rubber bands. I know it's cheating, but it's really fast because I can do this like in a few seconds. I can just roll a rubber band around these. And usually the, the, wi the, the wider the rubber band, the, the bigger diameter rubber band will give me a big diameter column. And they seem to work the best. And that's what he did here. He just, he just basically put one inside the other, inside the other, inside the other. And you only need one rubber band on the outside, but you could actually do layers inside here. And so maybe he had six layers of paper down at the base. Maybe on the next one he only had four, maybe three on the next one you know, two on the next one. So progressively they got lighter and the diameter got smaller all the way to the very top where it was almost nothing. And this has been, this has been standing since, uh, since uh, three o'clock yesterday afternoon. <laughs> so if it lasts la that long, they're pretty strong. So that's another variation that you could try. And of course you can, you can cluster these in groups of two or three and that would make like another base. All right, so I think we're done with this table. Let's go over here and uh, we'll, we'll look at some other possibilities. Uh, another possibility is just to take that idea of a, of a triangle and I fold it up in four, four equal se uh, sections and I sort of just do a triangle like that. And that's pretty strong because of that overlap. And uh, the, the nice lady, she made me a little mock-up of, of this big one. And she started with, you know, just a triangle, a little triangle at the top, something very light, folding it up, not in three, but in four, because you want that overlap to make it strong. We're not using any glue. And then she color-coded it. She did one color for the, for the service core, where all the elevators and stairs are. And then she used this gold color paper for, for the floors. And the floors are actually cantilevering out off the, uh, off the service core. A cantilever has no, no column at the end. It ju it's just it's like my hand. There's no column here. It's just projecting out of my torso which is the service core. So it's the same idea on this little model. And then I take that off, 
and I, I, she started with two triangles here. So she put two triangles together, and that's pretty strong. And again, you know, I can do a, a, a stress test. I can put my hand on that and push on it a little, compress it, and yeah, I feel that's pretty strong. I feel that's pretty strong. So I don't have to use potatoes every time. Another floor. And then down at the base, you have one, two, three, four, five, six of these. And I, I, well, that's probably like a hexagon or something like that. So that's what she did there. And that's, that's very strong. That's a very strong structure. And it keeps getting stronger the further down she goes. It's progressively getting stronger. And again, I put my hand on that, and that can take a lot of, a lot of compression. So, and then, she did this one, it's the same, you know, conceptually it's the same thing. She just did it at a bigger scale. She starts with six down at the base and she's using this green paper and we have a lot of this stuff in the lab. We have enough for about a hundred years and it's stiffer so it's even stronger. And she starts with six of these down at the base. Then she makes four and then three and then two, and then one at the top. So she's progressively getting lighter, but she keeps using that same um, paper. And then, of course, you can always measure these when, when you're done, and you can compare it to what your sister did or your brother did and see who has the tallest one. So this one is about, this one's about oh, 40, 45 inches, which is pretty good. But you're going to see even taller ones than this today. You're going to see even taller ones than this today. Because you'll, you'll be amazed just how high you can make these when you get, when you get started. OK, so far we've, been, we've just been piling geometric shapes. You know, we've been piling up cylinders or triangles or, or crosses or some other sort of geometric shape. But there are, there are variations you can do. So, for example, I can, um, if, you, if you're allowed just to tear the paper or use scissors, you can sort of interlock these like that. And that will give you like really strong connections. Or you can take this, right, and fold it and put that through there, right? And that will sort of inter interlock them and give you pretty strong connections. Okay, so that's what, that's what he, whoever did this, they, they actually did something like that, right? And they sort of interlocked them and they used different colors for each sheet. And, and then you can get like really refined with these. So, for example, she, she's almost like doing particle architecture where she makes that form, folds it, and bends it and interlocks it, and she puts one into the other, into the other, into the other, into the other, and she ends up with uh, anything. It could be like a pavilion or, or a sculpture or something else, and you can just keep adding and adding and adding. So you can get very refined with these and uh, just by tearing or cutting and interlocking them and folding them. And you notice how many times she folded this one, two, three, four times. And she just keeps using that shape over and over again. So that's another variation you can do. And, and this guy just did this last night. It's almost like Disneyland. And he's sort of interlocking shapes here. He's using the bundled tube. So he's got like three tubes here. He's using some rubber bands on it. And he's got a very strong triangular base. And at the top, he's able to actually make a cone. So it's almost like Disneyland. It's almost like Disneyland Castle. A lot of nice use of color and uh, interlocking things. So that, that and it still it didn't fall down yet either. So that's a miracle. Now, the other way you can do this is, is you can make it very architectural. You can make post and beam construction that goes all the way back to you know, the Egyptians and Stonehenge and all those famous monuments of the past. Um, and they still build this way nowadays too. And you can take like, 
uh, uh, well, what is this, 11 by 17 or whatever it is, and fold it up into five equal sections and just, you know, interlock them. And uh, yeah, sometimes they want to turn into a triangle, but what I'm trying to do is a square. So you end up with, with a square, with a square. And actually this one I think worked a little better because this is only eight and a half by 11. So see there it works better. And that just forms a square. And you can do a column, you can do a beam. And yes, beams usually are a lot deeper than this, but that's okay. We'll, we'll just do everything the same way to keep it simple. And so I can do a column, column, beam, column, column, beam and then run a trellis on top. And yeah, they do start to deform, but they do, they do keep their structural integrity. They don't fall down. So that's another way you can do it. The only problem is trying to go vertical with this. It's sort of hard to do, right? You, you're kind of stuck with, you know, something that's very uh, horizontal. Horizontally, you could go on forever with these. And this is actually another one we did. And that brings up the idea of scale. You, you don't know how big these things are until you, you put in scale figures. So these are half inch scale. And the way I can tell, I can take a ruler and, and just measure them. And they're about three inches high. So every half inch is a foot. Uh, so that, that they're like six feet high people at half inch scale. So you know, I put that up there. And that'll give me an idea of just how big that thing really is, right? I can just, it's not going to listen to me. So that's why, you know, I always put a piece behind it so it actually stays. And if I put that up there, <laughs> if I put that up there, yeah, then automatically I know how big that is. I can gauge the size of that. And it, yeah, it's pretty imposing. You know, it's pretty, pretty monumental. Now, let's say I, I go to a smaller scale. Let's say I go to the quarter inch scale, and these, these people are quarter inch. In other words, they're, they're about an inch and a half high. Every quarter inch is a foot. They're roughly six feet high. Let's say I put them up instead, and, and it's just become much more monumental now. It's just, it's, everything's twice as big. But in, un, until I put people there, I don't really know how big it is. I don't really know how big it is. So I always try to get people. You can find people online, or you can make your own. You can make wire people. You can look on YouTube for ideas about how to make people. You, you could put trees in these, you know, get trees from your backyard, branches. You can put in landscaping. You can make these very architectural. And then this one, I, I, the same idea, and you know, that's what I started with. And then I put 11 by 17, this 11 by 17 around it, sort of made a triumphal arch. Then I used back here, I used um, legal size. And then back here, I just did various configurations. So for example, Another configuration I could do is like a T. So it's like perfectly balanced. I have a cantilever on both sides. And that, that, that seems to work. Or, you know, you can, you can experiment with other ways. So yeah, you, you, so here I almost made like a tunnel. So anything horizontal, it works just great. But if you try to go up, it gets really hard. So I hope you can try uh, some of these uh, simple problems. And we, we started very simply today, and, and we ended up doing very advanced things. But where, wherever you're at, you, you may want to try some of the more simple ones first that I showed you at the very beginning, and then try to progress through them as a series, because I, I showed you various ways to do it. And then, uh, you know, Renz and Marx were, were more advanced, right? So uh, don't feel you have to get up to their level yet because they're already in college, right? So you can start at a very, in a very simple way, the way I started them, and kind of work your way up. And I'd encourage you to do this because you, you may have a career, you know, life is like self-discovery. You're trying to find out who you are. 
and what you're good at. And if you find something that you're good at and you, you enjoy doing, then when you wake up in the morning, you're not going to work, you're going to have fun. And so fun, creativity, they're like very important. And so if, if you enjoy doing these things and you're good at them and you can't get enough of it, that could be a sign you have a vocation in one of the environmental design fields. And then you just take it from there and uh, maybe, maybe sign up at a, at a class in a community college to sort of explore it further because community colleges are about self-discovery and trying to find out how you fit into the world. And we all have a mission, we all have a purpose. And just remember that you, 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 there's something that you can do that no one else probably can. So anyway, again, my, you know, I'm Jonas Sturrus, and uh, I'm at Jonas Sturrus uh, at HancockCollege.edu. That's my email address if you have any questions. We have a Facebook page. It's uh, Facebook.com, Allen Hancock College Architecture. We, we post a lot of the student work there that, that you can look over. And also you can, you can contact uh, P P Professor Sadig, and his name is Saad, S-A-A-D, Sadig, Sadig, like this. And he's, uh, he's the uh, full-time professor in architecture here. He's thought at, uh, at Cal Poly and at Cuesta. And, and also here, and he's the full-time professor. You can, he, I'm sure he'd, he'd love to hear from you. And I think it's ssadig at hancockcollege.edu for him. Uh, so if we can help you in any way, don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, we all had a lot of fun today. I hope you enjoyed these. And I hope you'll, you'll be trying some of these at home. And so thank you very much and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you for participating. We hope you enjoy the workshop. Remember, first year free at Allen Hancock College. Go Bulldogs!